Animal Crossing, a peaceful game about picking fruit, digging for fossils, and making friends with cute animal neighbors. Most games today are about grand adventures full of action and danger. But I gotta say, sometimes it's nice to just sit back, breathe in that ocean air, and just chill without having to worry about lands to save or villains to conquer. But what if I told you that this idyllic island paradise is not as innocent as it seems? What if I told you that hiding amongst the friendly neighbors and good vibes is a true villain, the greatest con artist the gaming industry has ever seen? And it's not the man that you think. This is the Animal Crossing Bell Explained. For those few people who didn't spend literal weeks of their life playing this game in the early lockdown, Animal Crossing is a cute little island town simulator. You can interact with your neighbors, buy clothes, and decorate your house with all sorts of fun furniture. And all of this is made possible with the in-game currency of Animal Crossing, the bell. In the course of playing this game, you're gonna need a lot of bells. Wanna buy a new shirt? Gotta pay in bells. Need a new bed? Bells! Wanna expand your home? Well, that's gonna cost you a cool 5.69 million bells. Huh. And, uh, this, uh, this game was supposed to be an escape from real life? That last fact has earned the game's realtor, Tom Nook, a bit of a bad reputation here on the internet. I mean, the guy builds you a house without really asking and immediately puts you in debt to him. The moment you crawl your way out of that debt, he just upgrades your house again and adds more debt to the pile in a vicious cycle to squeeze every single bell he can out of you. I'll admit, it's not a great look. But then again, he is building you a freaking house on a lush island paradise, so is he really all that bad? Sure. 5.696 million bells sounds like a lot, but an apple goes for a hundred bells, so surely these things can't be that valuable. Now, I'll admit, for this next part, I had this big plan to compare a whole bunch of items in Animal Crossing to the cost of their real-life counterparts to find the average conversion rate from bells to dollars. It was going to be great with this whole big spreadsheet with color coding and integrated formulas. Oh, it was going to be beautiful. Until I realized that, like, 50 different people have already answered this question like four years ago when this game first came out, and it's really not that hard to figure out. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, you can purchase a Nintendo Switch for your home for the low, low price of 29,980 bells. As it just so happens, in Japan, where this game was developed, a real Nintendo Switch will cost you 29,980 yen. So from this, we can tell that the developers intended the bell to be equivalent in value to the yen. For all my fellow Americans, one US dollar is equivalent to 157.03 yen. That means that Tom Nook's egregious 5.696 million bell waterfront two-story house with a basement is actually going to cost you the equivalent of 36 thousand two hundred ninety five dollars and forty eight cents that's not just cheap for a home like this that's an absolute steal the average price for a starter home in the u.s as of february 2024 is two hundred and forty thousand dollars for thirty six thousand dollars in today's housing market you're looking at run-down, cramped, one-story buildings in the middle of nowhere with chipped paint and zero amenities, or a literal empty one-acre lot. 
I'm never going to buy a home. This is the part of the video where I ask you to subscribe and check out my Patreon. <laughs> Link in the description down below. <laughs> On the surface, Tom Nook seems like a greedy, manipulative capitalist scamming you out of your hard-earned bells. But looking at the facts... This man is selling you a brand new house, right on the water, within walking distance of various stores and recreational places, for a literal fraction of what he could charge. All on a loan with 0% interest and no deadlines. This man is either incredibly generous or just plain stupid. But honestly, if anyone's the con artist here, it's you. But all this got me thinking, if Tom Nook is being so generous with the house that he's selling you, what about the other denizens of the island? Are the other shop owners equally charitable? Well, in order to answer this question, it looks like we're gonna need that beautiful spreadsheet after all. I mean, come on, would it really be an episode of the Chip Tide Show without one of these bad boys? Once again, assuming that one bell is equal to one yen, we can pretty easily convert the value of any item in Animal Crossing into a dollar amount. We can then compare the real life value of that type of item to find if we're being upcharged or taking a sweet deal. Now, obviously there are a lot of items in Animal Crossing, so I couldn't do this for every single one, but I tried to get a bunch of different types of items to get a representative sample. And I've included a link to my spreadsheet down in the description below. Simply enter the value of the item in bells here and it will automatically calculate the corresponding value in dollars. Enter the real world dollar amount here and it will show you how much you're saving or getting scammed. Let's start with the general store, Nook's Cranny, run by Tom Nook's two sons. Will Timmy and Tommy share in their father's generosity, or are they the true villains, selling you wildly expensive furniture to fill the home their father so kindly provided you? A brilliant scheme, a con of the highest order. It's the first one. Aside from the Nintendo Switch, which sells for its exact real world value in yen, every single item that I looked at was vastly cheaper than its real life counterpart. A typical two seat sofa costs around $500. These kids are selling you one for $27.52. A rat and double bed with mattress and pillows included can easily run you $1,000 or more, but in Animal Crossing, you can get one for only 64 bucks. You can buy a bunk bed for 32 bucks, a futon for 1024, and a full gas range for 2240. Aside from the Switch, the only item I could find that sells for anything close to its real world value was the gaming chair. So I guess these kids just hate gamers or something. On average, an item at Nook's Cranny will sell for 22.33% of its real life cost. Looking at the Able Sisters clothing store, we see a similar trend. Looking at pants, shoes, shirts, and hats, we can see that clothes here are generally sold for 17 to 18% of what they would cost in real life, over 80% savings. Heck, even a cup of coffee will only cost you a buck twenty-seven, as opposed to the current US average of nearly five dollars. When you actually break down the numbers, everyone on this island is incredibly generous with their prices. Sure, it could have something to do with the island's isolation with only a handful of potential customers, there's not an insane amount of demand for anything, and something tells me that Blue Bear doesn't have a ton of disposable income. But then, who is the true villain that I alluded to at the start of the episode? Is it you for taking advantage of those innocent villagers who don't know the value of their goods? No, 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 my friend. While this may seem all sunshine and rainbows on the surface, digging down a little deeper, the numbers reveal a very different story. There is one resident of the island with a solid grasp on the ways of capitalism. One cunning salesman 
who's been scamming you out of millions of dollars, billions of bells, without you even noticing. Or should I say, two salesmen. But wait, I hear you say. I thought you said Timmy and Tommy offered great deals on their furniture. And you're right, they do. Suspiciously good deals, might I say. Think about it. The cost of parts alone for a gas stove would easily be a few hundred bucks, and yet they're selling it to you for only 22? How on earth are they turning a profit? Well, it turns out that my spreadsheet only tells half the story here. Nook's Cranny doesn't just sell items. They can also buy stuff from you. Doing some quick math, Timmy and Tommy will buy any furniture item for 25% of the price you bought it for. Based on my research, it's generally recommended that you sell used furniture for 50 to 75% of the price you bought it, so they are shortchanging you a little bit here. It isn't anything super egregious, they sell stuff for pretty cheap, so it makes sense that they would buy stuff for pretty cheap. But it does mean that they'll make a decent chunk of change whenever they resell something that you sold to them. But hey, fair enough, you gotta respect the hustle, that's just how capitalism works. But most of the time, if you buy some furniture from Nook's Cranny, you're probably not gonna sell it back to them. Instead, the main way that you make money in this game is by selling the various items you find around the island. Bugs, fish, fossils, fruit, stuff like that. Using a similar process to before, we can find out how much each of these items sell for in the game and compare that to how much they sell for in real life. And if we do that, we find that while Timmy and Tommy do tend to sell things for far less than they're worth, they buy stuff for a lot less than they're worth. Fruit is a bit tricky because the value of each type of fruit will vary from game to game, so we can't get a blanket conversion. But just as an example, if an apple is native to your island, it will sell for 100 bells or 64 cents. If it's not native, it'll sell for 500 bells or $3.20. In real life, an apple usually costs around $1.30, so if you're selling a native apple, you're losing a little bit, but if you're selling a non-native apple, you're making a little bit. Looking at bugs, we find that Timmy and Tommy pretty much universally buy them for less than they're worth. Yeah, turns out that bugs can be a little more expensive than you might think, since if you're buying one, it's probably to keep as a pet. A monarch butterfly costs $1.77, but they'll only pay 90 cents for it. A hermit crab costs around eight bucks, but they'll only pay 640. And a praying mantis costs around $25 in real life, while in the game, it only sells for 275. Weirdly, it seems like fish are the only thing that they'll buy for more than their real world price. Unlike bugs, a lot of fish are dirt cheap and Timmy and Tommy will usually buy them for anything from two to 10 times their real world value. I don't know, maybe they're running a secret sushi restaurant on the side or something. But in all these cases, we're talking about a difference of pennies to a few dollars. I mean, it's not exactly an egregious scam to buy an orange for 85 cents less than its market value. So why do I say that these kids are the true villains of Animal Crossing? Well, as any Animal Crossing aficionado will know, there's one thing that Timmy and Tommy will buy that I've yet to talk about. Scattered across the island, you'll be able to dig up fossils from all sorts of dinosaur species. Now, you could donate these fossils to the local museum to be preserved and studied and help advance our understanding of these great prehistoric creatures and of life on our planet as a whole, or you could just sell them to Timmy and Tommy to make a quick buck. As you might expect, these fossils do sell for a lot more than some fish or bugs. But not nearly as much as they should. Now, unsurprisingly, the practice of buying and selling 
dinosaur bones is a messy business, morally gray at best and straight up illegal at worst. From what I can find, the value of real dinosaur bones can vary greatly based on the quality of the fossil, the iconography of the dino in question, and the legality of the source you're buying from. And I'm fairly confident that the FBI have been looking at my search history for the past few days like, huh. But I assure you, it was all worth it to expose the truth. Because when it comes to fossils, Timmy and Tommy aren't just shortchanging you. They're scamming you out of thousands, nay, millions of dollars. In real life, even an incomplete Ankylosaurus fossil can sell for $6,300. In the game, Timmy and Tommy will buy it from you for 2,500 bells or the equivalent of $16. And that was the most generous offer I could find. A fully preserved Triceratops skull will sell for around $285,000, but in Animal Crossing it sells for 5,500 bells, or just $35.20. A real life Diplodocus skull sells for $835,000, yet here they'll only take it for 32 bucks. But the biggest con of all has to be the T-Rex skull. Because of its iconic nature, a fully preserved skull of a Tyrannosaurus Rex could sell for around $6.1 million. Here in Animal Crossing, Timmy and Tommy can take it off your hands for a cool $38. Every single time you sell them a dinosaur bone, they are literally making hundreds of thousands to potentially millions of dollars. Seeing as you can find four fossils a day, these two raccoon kids are racking in billions of dollars per year. All this time, people have been assuming that Tom Nook was some evil con artist, a criminal kingpin, but he was nothing more than a pawn in his son's fossil racketeering ring. Tom Nook sells some poor sap a home on a remote island for an impossibly low price. An island that Timmy and Tommy know is filled to bursting with valuable dinosaur fossils. They'll sell you all sorts of furniture at a premium price, but in order to make room for that stuff, you'll have to expand your home. Doing so will put you further and further into debt, but no worries. You can always just sell the stuff you find around the island to good old Timmy and Tommy, and you'll pay that off in no time. Heck, we'll even sell you the tools you need to do it. And all the while, Timmy and Tommy can turn around and sell those dino fossils you've been digging up for millions more than they paid you for them, all without ever having to lift a finger. Timmy and Tommy are the true villains of Animal Crossing. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, pretty sure the FBI are here to arrest me for illegal fossil. Oh, and hey, we got a runner. FBI, hands in the air. Go, 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 go. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alkazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. This show would not be possible without your support, so thank you.